Hello and welcome along to the Where's My Kit Bag podcast hosted by the three lovely media technicians of the Sixth Form College, Farnborough. With me, James. Me, Will. And I'm Steve. How are we, How are we, peeps? Very festive. I'm feeling it. Yeah, Did someone say very festive? That's right. I've got rock-themed Christmas music because it was the only stuff I could find for free. Nice. Cool. I like this. This is better than the normal stuff. Thanks. Better than paying Mariah Carey for her royalties. <laughs> this would be my WWE entrance song. What? Deck the Halls? Yeah, turn up the a rock bit. version. This is good. Uh, I believe you'd be coming in. Yeah, with fire. Yeah. What would your outfit be? Uh, OG jungle. Santa. I'll be green. Nice. OG Santa? Yeah. Nice. So, yeah, so I have a lot of jingles my now. My special move, I'll put them in like a big stocking. Nice. I'll, like, <laughs> turn it into a punching bag. <laughs> Welcome to Metal Christmas. Nice. I like this. I've you know when more. they go under the, the stage to get a weapon out? I just get this giant candy cane. Didn't one wrestler have like a little leprechaun? <laughs> yes. Yeah, I, I believe that was a that. Will can have a little elf that comes out from under the under the, uh, under the mat. What would your finisher be, Will? It would be the chimney sweep. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> what, what would you do to your uh, wrestling opponent with a chimney sweep? Oh, you have to wait and see for that. Oh, you're teasing us. Yep. What, what, actually, no, what would your name be, though? What would your wrestler name be oh, if know. you were, like, this green Santa? Suplex Santa. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the finishing move. No, no, the, the finishing Santa move is milk and cookies. Nice. Oh, is that your wrestling name? <laughs> Might. I don't yeah. Yeah. Moves, moves. Yes, you know. No, these are moves. I don't have Suplex a Suplex Santa. Name. Oh my god, that's amazing. Just Saint oh. Nick. I think it should just be called Saint Nick. <laughs> that's pretty good. Saint Nick. Introducing first, Saint Nick. Weighing in at 743 pounds. I don't think we've ever segued more than that. Ho, ever. Ho, ho. Green giant. <laughs> that's what I thought let's you were go, going let's with that. Let's go, let's go. You're spoiling them all already. No, don't stop. I haven't fired them all off. I've no. got more. Go, trust go. me. Let's, okay. let's go. Segway. Right. Let's let's have some let's have some some department news with Steve. Now with the festive news, it's Steve. Steve. Hello. So, uh, I what was it going to be? Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. No, um, there's some good news up in up in the old Beacon Building this week. Uh, Mock's going on at the moment, which is making uh, making the rounds, I guess you could say. Um, and and all that seems to be going well. They're uh, they're coming to a close now upon listening to this podcast. And the film deadline is looming. Uh, that means that edit suites and IT suites are going to be limited, as second year film students are going to be panicking. Um, but all looks good. Uh, it's it actually does. for my, you know, second academic year here. Uh, it's it, the the students seem significantly more organised, which is a good thing. So hats off to you, current students. Um, yeah, sort your ideas out, last year's students, because you're, you're not as good. But um, I've seen a few <laughs> of the films. I've seen a few of the films. Honestly, it yes. goes far to say, festival worthy, university level would get a good grade as well. Some of them, you know decent needle in a haystack of of you know this level of film quality and by that i mean people are in their infancy in their careers and some of them have already skyrocketed to a level of excellence and mm. hats off to that i think what's really impressive is that they haven't done any film work in college anyway in the first year yeah and you know the stuff i've made now is pretty incredible yeah for a, for a first attempt hats off to to be, to be fair i've not seen a single film where i'm not like fair play this is actually pretty decent um, what else is happening? Uh, film club again from to to kind of uh, repeat what I said uh, a couple of weeks ago. It was a success. Um, however, there won't be a Christmas screening this year. Um, what we're going to do is uh, I've actually sent out an email as of about half an hour ago of recording this podcast. So yesterday, if you're listening to this podcast on the day of release, um, I put out an email. You, it is called Film Club Dash Putting the Power of Film in Your Hands. Go and find that email. On there is a form, and on that form is basically uh, it's going to ask for your name uh, to basically to gauge how many people are interested in Film Club and a suggestion for Film Club. The reason we ask for that is because we want to give you guys the option of what films we screen during Film Club. That way, it goes onto a nice Google form for me to see. I can then, you know, shortlist some films that are appropriate. At the moment, there is currently 
no kind of limit on what you can suggest but obviously it's got to go through some sort of staff screening i.e myself and dan um and we're going to shortlist three every time and send out a kind of mass email so people can vote on those films then one film will win the vote and be screened at film club how exciting um and the first screening i believe is the 13th of january so it's the second monday back um and the film is not yet decided because no one's actually put in any suggestions Ooh. so there's that uh newsletter is getting a proper christmas you know look that's in the works that's currently being uh being put together can't really get uh, i'm not hitting the nail on the head yet i'm not pleased with it um but you know it'll be a good festive one um and on that newsletter weirdly enough because you'll be listening to this is everything that we talk about in an upcoming segment will actually be on the newsletter so stay tuned for that and if you haven't read the newsletter yet what are you doing uh, open up your phone while you're listening to this pod go and have a look at the newsletter while i'm talking how about that that sounds good two bits of content i was gonna say can't they listen to the pod and read the newsletter at the same exactly time? so yeah while you're listening to the pod uh, go nice. on your phone clever go on your emails go on the technet page or if you're standing in the department listening to the pod right now firstly give us a wave and then go and look at one of the uh newsletters that's on the wall there you go nice. awesome. limitless possibility yeah exactly. and knowledge and knowledge and opportunity and competitions and more knowledge technet newsletter peace out that's all i've got for you it's good nice it's really exciting it is it's definitely good yeah oh there Intense cut there. <laughs> oh, Steve didn't do a sign off yet. Oh yeah, stay classy, Beacon Building. Boom. Ho ho ho! That sounds like the Green Giant. Yeah, I'm really with you does. on that one. <laughs> it's it's copyright free Santa. Nice. Can you do it? Can you do better than that? Wait. Um. Ho ho ho! Too far. I think that's actually better. I would take Thanks. that. That sounds like the the soundbite. Wait. All right. So th- this th- this is me. Ho ho ho! And this is the recording. Ho ho ho! Ah, you've done well. I think you've done really well. Nice. Very See festive. It's the other way around. There's more. <laughs> Trust me. Trust me, there's more. Amazing. Uh, shall we move on to a little bit of the old uh, the old tech news? Absolutely. <laughs> well, is there tech news? Oh, I didn't get a Christmassy jingle. All right. Uh, I'm a bit disappointed ho, now. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> Just chuck it back in. I can give you Christmas right. name. Oh, with. no. That's, that's all good. Right. So, tech news. Um, Nice. So on Tech News today, we're going to be mixing it up a little bit with our own custom Christmas list. So we've all had a little think, a little ponder uh, about little Christmas ideas we're going to be adding to our want list. Uh, However, we're going to start with a bit of actual Tech News. Uh, Big changes coming to YouTube. There's lots of terms and conditions changing. People swearing in videos can now be monetized, which is quite interesting. That's coming up. Ooh. Um, and also they're cracking down on sort of, I want some more of the Crimbo music. That was again. amazing. Keep that on. We're going back to St. Nicholas. Oh, good. I mean, I, I could, oh. hang on, hang on. YouTube is cracking down. Oh, what's this one? I enjoyed the gentle stuff. It was really nice. Oh yeah, yeah. Do. okay, that'll cool. Do. And um, yeah, YouTube are cracking down on people who are um, threatening any form of violence. So, and they can pick, apparently they can pick up tendencies. So if they can see that you kind of like have a violent, aggressive nature, you could be banned. So, Ooh. yeah, you know, stay on the nice list on uh, YouTube. Nice, very nice. good, very nice. good, very good. So let's segue into our Christmas crimbo lists, which will be on the newsletter. Which will be on the newsletter. Um, I think Christmas we, list. Nice. <laughs> very nice. Thank you. If we can, Where's that yeah. from? Uh, that's from one 50, of our isn't it? the Nifty 50 video yeah. where I go, Christmas list. I knew where it was from. Oh, oh. I knew where it was from. I was telling the listeners where nice. they can find oh, the original. Sorry. Right. Sorry, ruin the feature. Um, oh, what have I done? Right. So we were going to do a big collection of like, I don't know, t- top 10, top 20. Uh, but I think we're just going to say some things that are kind of on our, on our watch lists. Um, so let's start off with you, James. What are you looking at? Uh, right, so I had a little browse of Amazon before we started this pod um, so I could see what was kind of going around on the old deal sphere and then sort of thinking what would uh, what would students maybe want in the obviously under £50 bracket. Um, so this is more gifts for you, not gifts for me. Um, so lens filters, quite underrated piece of kit, I, I would say. Um, these uh, lens filters come in various colours. There's a nice big pouch for them to all go in. Um, and there's obviously various different sizes so that fit different camera lenses, etc, etc. They're only £35.99 and it's a 40-in-1 lens filter kit. 
It also includes different colour filters to go in front of your camera lens. So Very you can cool. Get a bit different crazy. Different colours. Lovely. Um, next one is LED video lights. Oh, I would say. Are we do, are we do, oh, do one oh, each as oh. we go round? Are we doing one each or are we doing all of ours in one hit? Oh, I think we should just go round one each. One round, each. And round, round right, one each. Yeah. But only reason I'm asking that is because yes. can I segue from that into, into yes. my, my recommendation? Well, let's yes, go. go. Steve, take it away. away. Tell, me, tell me what you're going for. Digital gift for all you photographers out there. Grab yourself a Lightroom preset pack. How about that? Is that a pretty good? Oh, very gift? nice. Yeah, um, good suggestion. Does that bring you joy to the world, Steve? Uh, I'd, it brings me joy to my photographs. Nice, absolutely. Um, but Will was actually the one who who introduced me to uh, LUTs. Yes, right. LUTs. look up tables. Um, and basically, they're professional presets uh, where they've essentially gone in and, and tweaked all the settings, given it a nice, 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 lovely name, made about ten or fifteen of them, and put them into a pack. Um, Will was kind enough to uh, well give me uh, the Peter McKinnon V2 pack. Um, and it, it does influence a lot of my nice, a lot of my photos. And I'd re I really want another one. It's actually on my main Christmas list. I want the V3. Um, it's around thirty dollars. So what would that be? Anywhere from twenty about to twenty-five 20, pounds. Yeah, about yeah. twenty, twenty. Yeah, about twenty-three quidish. And they're fantastic right. because it takes a raw photo, uh, puts a bit of you know, mood and style on it, and then you have the ability to tweak it if it's a bit too intense or it's not as in, not correct for you so it's a great starting point to get some really high quality professional photographs would so you, would you say it adds a bit of zhuzh yeah zhuzh mm. is a great adjective mm. which is good so if you do end up getting yourself a camera or a new phone take some photos on it get yourself a lightroom pack bosh you're all good well speaking of cameras that kind of that segues, segues nicely well, into mine. so uh Super something segues. i was looking at is uh, have you heard of a company called tile yeah, so no. I've heard about them. So, Tile is a company that specialise in very small, like little pocket squares that you can attach to pieces of equipment, bags, mm. and it GPS tracks it. So, um, they've just announced this little tiny one, which is sort of the size of a button, um, that you can stick to your camera, mobile phone, tablet, stuff like that. Um, and then, obviously, while you're out and about, if you ever lose it, if it ever goes missing, it's got this tracking beacon on it, which is pretty cool. Um, and vice versa, it can actually track your phone that you could be using to look at it. So there's a little button on top. If you hold that down for five seconds, it rings your phone automatically. My Ooh. brother has them all the time because he loses everything. Yeah. Their only downside, which I can understand, is once they run out of battery, that's it. But apparently they last like two years. So Ow. the ones that are, don't have a replaceable battery last three years. However, oh, there is yeah. a pro version, which is, now has a replaceable battery. Amazing. In it. It's a really cool idea. My brother uses it all the time. He just goes on his phone, can't find my keys, and this alarm starts going off from somewhere random in the house. He goes, there it is. It's great. It's actually really mm. handy. Mm. So yeah, it's look up tile. There's all sorts of sets and deals on offer at the moment as it's the festive period. Uh, yeah, so moving on. Uh, talking of things you can attach to things, LED video lights. It's nice. a weak segue, but it will do. Um, so, uh, obviously, LED video lights, I would say, are a crucial part to any person's film or, you know, photography projects. Um, I've spotted there's some currently going around for the sub £25 mark, and they look slightly bigger than our small LEDs. Nice. Very They're not really a bad handy. Price. Really Very handy. handy. Uh, this particular one comes with a rechargeable battery, Ooh. which we may invest in our department as well, because they look pretty good for the cost. Yes. Very nice. There you go. Well, in that same camera bag that you could potentially buy, I, I would throw that one in, but I'm actually going to go with something else. Think another thing you can attach to a camera. Funny nice. enough, Will also owns this product, but I really want one myself. It's a Peak Design camera strap. Oh, um, they, they are fancy. So these are really cool because I've noticed this a lot through not having one. Is it's good to have a camera strap when you're taking photos. But on my Canon 80D, I do photos and video. And sometimes I like to swip and swap and, and be quite quick. But taking off a camera strap can take a long time. These Peak Design... Actually, well, you've got one. Why don't you explain well, what yeah, they are? Well, yeah, <laughs> the Peak Design clip, their system, in fact, is kind of all meant to work together. You attach these two tethers to either bit of your sort of like straps where you'd normally put them. And it's like a quick release system, almost like you have on a tripod. However, it's, you can just do it with your thumbs. Um, and they come off really easily and then there you go you've got no straps on your camera um, and also the straps are super adjustable and you can like sort of change it from that sort of tourist tourist look where you kind of got it around your neck to use sort of like a side strap which is how I like to have my camera most of the time uh, you can do that in a couple of seconds so yeah. definitely worth mm. the money really just be careful um, there's quite I think there's three different versions and they all carry different weight limits so just make sure you kind of know what you're getting like that nice onwards cool, cool. Oh, well, about back to me again. Yep. Um, I'd say a big one to pick up is audio. Uh, I think mm. we're all quite fascinated by our camera gear, but when you're making a film or, or any sort of kind of content with sound in, uh, it is so important. As I say, it's normally 50% of film. I'd say look, say look into a H1N. I've seen them going for a pretty good price at the moment. 
Um, and you can also plug in an external mic into the H1 on a 3.5mm jack. Uh, and that can be pretty handy too. So the H1 handy recorder, pick one up. By Zoom. By Zoom. Zoom, yes. Good old Zoom. Back to you. With more aggressive Christmas music. Um, next one on my list, again, something else, but this time it's actually to the front of the lens. Uh, a macro slash wide angle adapter. If you can't afford maybe a, a hefty macro lens or a wide angle lens because, you know, your budget is quite small, uh, consider getting one of these that screws onto the front of your existing lenses and gives you that kind of macro factor or wide angle factor uh, or both. Um, all at the same time and they're really handy and they're about sort of the depending obviously what size you get between 22 and 24.99 very nice there you go nice and easy so gentlemen you've talked about all these amazing things to get all this amazing yes. content great sound great video nice macro shots mm. but if you want a nice stocking filler for somebody who's interested in photography or video uh, perhaps getting them an SD card holder. Oh, That's a good yes. Thing. They can range from three pounds for a nice little, like, you know, six piece one. But if you spend a little bit more, you can get ones that are, like, waterproof, durable, and stuff. And, well, photography is kind of pointless without an SD card. So investing in keeping those little puppies safe is a great stocking filler. I've asked for one myself, even though I already have uh, already got one. But I want one a bit more robust, just in case, I don't know, it falls out of my bag or something. The last thing I want is my footage to get damaged. Nice. Onwards. Good idea. Uh, I am suggesting uh, going for an external sort of power bank, but a big one. Um, so anything, uh, we're generally saying sort of under the 50 mark, aren't we? Yes. So you can be looking here at anything from sort of like 20 to 35,000 milliamp hours. I thought you were uh, going to say 1,000 pounds. Yeah. <laughs> 25 to 35,000 pounds. That would be expensive. <laughs> uh, the great thing about these, well, for, for me at least, is that I can charge my camera remotely from it. Um, I can. You can charge GoPros, phones, anything whilst you're on set. There's nothing worse than not having be any power around you. And if you're out shooting, you know, in the woods, you're definitely gonna have, not going to have that's any. That's a good point, actually. I'm, so, I'm going to Wales um, to go hiking. Yeah, so if you've got something mission. that can charge all your devices up, make sure it's got a bit of quick charge feature on it. That's always handy. Uh, might work well with those LED lights you were talking about, Bill. Oh, yeah. Indeed. Yeah. Yes, you can recharge them as you go. Uh, the last one on my list uh, is... I, I would say one of the one of the most underrated things I've ever bought. But then whenever I use it, I'm like, damn, this is a great buy. Uh, it's a mini wireless uh, Bluetooth keyboard uh, keyboard with a trackpad built into it. Oh, I've seen you. I've seen that. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're absolutely flipping amazing. Um, I use it with a Raspberry Pi. I use it with my computer. So like, like, like picture the scene. You you want to you know you want to watch something in bed, but you don't want to be sat at your desk. Uh, and with your computer monitor all going, you want to, you know, sit back, relax, chill on your bed or your sofa. But obviously, you don't want to keep getting up every 30 seconds to, you know, uh, click a mouse uh, or, you know, touch something on your keyboard. Why not take the keyboard with you with this handy little 15.99 pound wireless keyboard? Genius. Very cool. And they're they're so small and they've got a rechargeable battery in them. So you don't need to bother buying double A's. Winner. I love that. Uh, I've got one more. Go for it, Steve. Uh, which we can put every gift that we've actually mentioned into is um, it, a bag? I actually, it is a bag yes. i don't actually own a camera bag yet and it's something i've actually yeah. asked for i'm not going to be doing an addison shot at addison and getting a, a ridiculous uh backpack a, a ridiculous one uh more for the case of i can't really afford one but <laughs> i would love one but we did me and will we had a little look in curries and there's one for 29.99 that actually pretty much does the whole job and the great thing about it is there's like a door on the side where you mm. can put a camera with a lens already attached on it um for quick and easy access so i'll be on that hike hopefully i'll get this this bag um and i can you know i can put my bag away so it rains i, th I think it might have a cover if not you can buy one there's a space at the top for your sd cards maybe a h1n maybe your led panel there's space for everything it's only 29.99 yes obviously you do lose that factor of some sort of uh real uh, hardened protection um but for for organization and, and ease of access to your camera equipment 29.99 for a nice little camera bag is pretty good does it happen to have a tripod holder on the side it does indeed that was uh, actually a key factor for will that's what i'm looking for i'm it, looking for a bag that has a tripod holder i've on got the a side. photo oh, it's a great one it's 29.99 we both saw it and we're like that would do the job it does the job hit me up. all you need it to do is do the job and if it does the job that's all that matters yes exactly. i would like a manfrotto one but i prefer to have I'd, a better uh, camera with a lesser bag than a big awesome bag with a lesser camera I was out shopping the other day and ha went into a camera shop and had a look at these sort of bags and straps and things. It's obviously a <laughs> Z6, yeah. Um, and, and I had a look and I was just like, oh my God, bag prices are different to when I used to shop for bags. 
There was one for like 150 quid. I'm like, but why? You I should... don't understand why this is 150 pounds. You should see Peter McKinnon's bag. I know it's like 700 quid, and mm. I don't understand. Why. But... I understand why because there's so many like compartments, but at the same time, I don't understand yeah, why. Yeah, to be fair, for for the shoots that I do externally, I, I don't even need that much space that Peter mm. McKinnon needs from his bag. So no, because he he's like going on like traveling around the world for a couple oh, of days, and away, then with yeah. like 15 cameras and eight lenses and then a tripod somehow folded in within yeah. it yeah all right do you have one last one Will? i do i do oh this one uh isn't really tech but it helps with tech no. uh i'm saying those gloves with the little touchscreen ability ah, yeah. nice. i picked nice. some of those up from primark for a pound for two oh. pairs it's pretty good two pairs yeah for a pound. it was great keeps my, keeps me warm in the morning you have to keep taking it on and off to you know use your phone or camera or whatever you know touchscreen on the back works on everything um, that's been a buy that I've used every day since I bought it, really. Ooh, so yeah, another stocking filler. Boom, love that. Well, to be fair, I think that's a pretty good list. That, that is a, a pretty that good is list. a pretty solid list. I'd be happy with all of that. Well, we'll try and force all of those onto uh, Steve's glorious newsletter. Next I'll do week. my best. I'll do my very oh, best. We'll put we'll put our favourites. We'll put a couple from each. Yeah, of us on I there. think what would that be? It's about three each. So that's about twelve items. I'd say that's very doable. And what I'll try and do is I'll try and find links to the best kind of. Uh, place to pick them up if you think there would be something that you're interested in so you could always you know send the newsletter section to your parents if you like anything from here will do would be very great. good idea mm, cool awesome. that well, was a well good li- i love that segment yeah. that was great that was good so much aggressive christmas music oh yes but let's hope that this guy comes down your chimney steve santa's coming to town santa! Oh my god! <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, I love that. <laughs> I've been waiting to drop that in. To be fair, if, if we weren't at like a college and there wasn't people that could probably hear us, I'd probably do the scream. But I'm not going to proper go for it. But yeah, I'd, I'd probably I'd, hurt my lungs. Yeah, I'd, I'd rip my throat apart. Yeah, I'm not going to do it. No, this. Can you voice. play it one more time? Yeah. Okay. Santa's coming to town. Santa! <laughs> Oh, that's golden! Great, <laughs> love that. You should see Steve's face now. It oh, is, it's it lit a, up. It's beaming with delight. It smiled like a um, character. But yeah, I think that pretty much ends up the the tech news slash Christmas list. Nice um, special on the uh, the old festive pod. I think is that. I think we might as well just call it that. To be honest, um, shall we move on to a little bit of tune of the week, boys? Let's do, do it. it. We were very in sync, there, Will. We both said let's do it at the same time. Let's do it. Welcome. You missed a trick with your one. one. Of us. Your one could what? have gone into like jingle bells. Um, your little transition. Um, rewind. Ho, ho, ho. There you go. All of them at once. That's nice. <laughs> I, it won't let me play like multiple things and change the volume, alas. Um, so th- this week I've gone a little bit rogue. Um, I decided to pick two normal tracks and one festive tune that I think two you should all be watching. Tracks. Two Why normal tracks. Two normal. Well. <sighs> I did that same thing again where I I, ha- I picked a track like basically the day after the pod last week. I went, oh, that's good. I love that. And then, yes. And then this morning on the radio, I heard a song and went, oh, and then listened to it again in the edit suite. And went, oh, good. Yes. What are they? So uh, would you like me to start with the Christmas track or the two normal ones? Let's go two normal ones. Two normal ones. The Christmas. Hit, hit you with a Christmas. Sadly, I can't play it due to legal reasons. Tears cry. Understood. Can you not play the Christmas one? Huh? Can you not play the Christmas one? No, pro- no, I know it's such a shame. That's I can play one. it so we can hear it, but they can't. But Damn. then that'll be weird podcasting. Yeah, just hearing us go, yeah, that's well funny, <laughs> and they're just silence <laughs> in the background, just oh. add tumbleweed in post. Um, so, so the two tracks I picked this week. Uh, so the one I picked last week, uh, which was going to be the only one, uh, is a band called Blossoms and a song called The Keeper. Um, so it's kind of a uh, very chilled out, mellow indie, um, a really nice tune uh, in general. Um, and I, I picked up on, uh, obviously, I'm a, a frequenting listener of Greg James's Radio One Breakfast Show. Um, and he was just like, here's a here's a cool song. Listen to this. I was like, hmm, yes, this is cool. I will listen to this. Thanks, Greg. Um, and yeah, so it's 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 just a really nice kind of just chilled out indie song really i, I can't cool. really give it any other explanation than that and what's the other one um and then the other one which i picked up literally this morning um is by an artist whose name is obscene it's b bam b bad doobie nice um so yeah so um so she, she's an artist who goes by the name of b bad doobie b-e-a-b-a-d-o-o-b-e-e nice just to really like hit it home uh, and it's a track called she plays bass 
um and uh I, I was i was giving it a listen obviously i normally read like the youtube comments for people going, oh my god that's the greatest person ever or oh, oh, i hate this uh. and someone described the genre of this perfectly bubblegum grunge interesting cool yeah that sounds so, like a really nice bubblegum that you've had for a long time yeah you don't want to spit out yet but it's lost all its taste oh that's that's quite uh, deep and that was, a bit too that's meaningful. What, that's what that spoke to me with. Oh no! See, for me that that was like grunge, but a bit more happy. Oh, nice, happy grunge. So you're halfway through the chewing gum that's run out of taste, and all of a sudden, bosh, back to full flavor. Yeah, nice. wow, nice. Oh. Oh. I, feel like I, in, doing I feel like we're in Willy Wonka's chocolate factory you, now. Pretty much, yeah. It's been tangoed. Nice. Old school. Other record. soft drinks are of course available. <laughs> Classic. Um, but yeah, no, it's it's. It's it's weird. It's I was listening to it. I was like, oh, this sounds a bit like morbid and depressing. Kind of like think like Nirvana, like kind of like that kind of like almost that kind of raw grungy kind of sound. And then and then you're hit with this kind of female vocalist who's um, surprisingly upbeat and very contradictory to the music she's playing. And I loved it. it was so cool. good. Um, she oh. hasn't got a proper. She's got a couple of sort of like album bits out. Um, and this one is on her latest EP. Cool. What this and what's on. our Christmas banger? So the Christmas banger is literally a cr- literally a banger. It's it good. is. Um, well, we played it to the uh, F6 guys for their uh, F6 Christmas quiz, hosted by the one and only Will Dover. Oh, my, thank you. Great questions. Thanks. No worries. You helped with most of them. I didn't. It was all you. All right, continue. Nice. Uh, so yeah, so it was. Uh, <laughs> Lil John of all people featuring featuring the Kool-Aid man going oh yeah every now and then uh, and it's called all I really want for Christmas and that's a majority of the lyrics of the song it's just him repeating all I all I really want really want for Christmas all I really want really want for Christmas is the things on my list baby yeah that's pretty that's much, pretty much it that's the whole song really yeah. and it is it's the most kind of obnoxious obtuse Christmas song but it's also amazing the video is quality you'll have this on repeat yeah guaranteed yeah it's it's the most gangster Christmas tune I think I've ever heard in my life I feel like if I was the it, when I listen to it it's the only song ever that I want to ride around in the winter wonderland with my window down <laughs> that's very true there you go um, so yes, feel free to check out all those songs. I won't put Little John onto the uh, "Where's My Kitbag" playlist. What? But because well, it's it's not like a you normal song. Commit. Fine, it'll go <laughs> yeah. just for Steve. So in, like, in the mid- imagine <laughs> it. Imagine it. it's like you know it's March. You know the sea texts are starting their course uh, midway through their coursework. Yeah. All I really want, yeah. Bring yeah. And the knack. Get the things on my list, list baby. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Kool Aid Man smashes <laughs> through the added sweet window. I see very. That's I see no stuff. negatives, let alone very little <laughs> negatives. Cool. It is an absolute banger. Uh, but yes, f- feel free to track down the "Where's My Kit Bag" playlist on Spotify. The link is in the description. Uh, on all the various platforms this podcast is on. Otherwise, yeah, check out the normal tracks of Blossoms, The Keeper, uh, and B Bad Doobie, and she plays bass. Yes, recommend them all. Although, ironically, she doesn't play bass. Oh, nice. Mm. It's more a homage to all the ladies who do play bass. Onwards! Onwards! Before we move on, whoa, whoa, whoa. Just, <laughs> bring it back. I just, I've just seen something on the board over there, but it's, it's really small writing. <laughs> Can you read that, Bale? There's, there's some uh, just for the audio, well for all audio listeners. There seems to be something written on the board. We seem to made a made a joke Seb last. Seb is my favourite student of Altim. He does all Liz work on time and gets it writ first try. Steve should lit Seb Lin Technet choice every week. It's really small, isn't it? Yeah, it's quite small. I can't even read it. You know what that gets. I'll give you your props, James. That's that's really good that you can read that from there. I mean, I think if that was a test for driving, I'd fail. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, welcome to the. I mean, had to, I had to put test. my extra glasses on yeah. to read this. That reminds me. Oh what? my goodness. Oh, have we I finally had the Batman. Have sound. I told? Oh, la, la. That would be great. Oh, okay. ha- right. Just quickly on the side. Um, Technet choice. Yes. Technet choice is coming yes. back next year. Um, everybody who has won in the past, don't worry, you're still in the running to get an oscar um which is great but we're going to do five more winners between now and may but they're once a month and we're using the new hashtag technet choice 2019 the reason we're using that is because that's the first year that's when the academic year started and then each year 
uh, the hashtag will change to the corresponding year. The reason that we've done this and the reason that it stopped was not because of your amazing work. It's because when we had hashtag technet choice, when you post a lot on a hashtag, for some reason, if you go on recent, it just shows anything after a while. It doesn't show like your legitimate recent. So stuff from last year that was like posted in the first few posts were coming up. So that was cheers said that was a good reminder mm. props to you my friend um so yeah tech net choices come back next year uh get on it some of the work's amazing and it got, it got like a really big roar last year when uh callum taylor won with an amazing portrait mm. onward my apologies for that segue no, i fine. actually completely forgot um i'll be more organized next time as my news anchor self shall we have a bit of uh what have we been watching boyos let's go yes. ho 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 He's learned pretty well, hasn't he? Well, I know. I'm, not, I'm quite M- quick. Mission and mashing now. So, um, what have we been watching? Who wants to go first? There is an all written there. There is an all. And it's the prompter. last week's Apprentice episode. Obviously, now, right, before we go further with talking about last week's Apprentice episode, looking at perfumes, um, I tried to get the Apprentice theme song oh. to play. However, I was stopped by the copyright man. Oh. Because... The artist hasn't been dead for seventy. Oh, we years. had this. You said you said this yeah. last week. But I'm just re- reiterating. Has it, it been for... seventy years now? No. Oh, it's it's been seventy, not seventy five. Oh. So in five years, Tom more podcast. Season seven. It's coming. It's coming. It's Watch coming. Out. As long and as then, Alan uh, Sugar's still kicking. Yeah. And then what will happen is the Apprentice <laughs> I hope will be so. yeah. <laughs> Not even So, uh, Apprentice boys, uh, have we all watched it? Is obviously the obvious well, question. Yes. Yes. Hit the alarm. What the spoiler alert? Yeah, even though it's a week old, but still, we'll take it. Go, go, go. The episode nice. prior to the final five the interviews. interviews. Yes, oh. it was tragic, absolutely tragic. The one thing I can su- <laughs> say sums up this task is Lewis. Uh, how we survived, I have no <sighs> idea. From you know, he's had some good experiences previously, showing a bit of creative flair, but he he was saying he was worried about Dean and all this sort of stuff goes off on his own and just absolutely flummoxes it it is mm. shambles oh it's terrible mm. it's a, it's one of the worst performances i've ever seen not get a firing mainly because um what well, dean is just inept in every way i don't think i've seen a more inept person oh i thought i could hear some music that was so quiet in the background is that better that's better it's the 12 days of christmas nice um, so yeah, on the uh, si- well, actually, the what's the day? On the, on, on the firing of the apprentice, <laughs> my sugar gave to me <laughs> <laughs> the final five. Um, but yeah, I, I'm, I mean, I'm glad Dean's gone. He was useless. He was being carried quite happily. Oh, he was I one mean, of my I've chosen I one. No, have you, have you, are you both of yours out? No, I have still got who's, one more. Who's your other one? Who's um, your other one in the sweepstakes left? Of a C, Quill, Car, Co. Oh, Karina. 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 That's nice. it. I the thing I found interesting about Dean is he, Mine, he seemed gone. to have strengths. I'll give him his due. But he when, he, when he wasn't the like extremely confident in what he was saying, i.e. pitching, oh my God, was it in, was it awkward and, and He was trying to spray the perfume. Oh, even that looked awkward. Dear, the, the poor, I, I saw a lot of myself in him when trying to sell something or like, you know, sell myself when I have no idea what I'm talking about. Because you you could see the cogs turning in, in, in his head, but just... He was, you know, insert window shut down music here. <laughs> like, just dun, 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 dun. Um, What did you guys think about uh, Lottie's treatment? How she was treated? She's definitely been kicked to the sidelines now. Oh, yeah. But I'm glad she's still sticking up for herself. Yeah. She knows She knows what she's capable of. Right. Uh, that, that I only have one issue with Lottie, right? As a librarian, I, w- I would assume that, you know, Lot- Lottie can, you know, operate the Dewey Decimal System, you know, knows where books are. Now, how has she got all these skills? Yeah. Like, she's she knows wine tasting better than the wine tasters. She's helped her friends pick a perfume yeah, for her wedding, which is clearly... Skill. Exactly. That, that was but a bit she, of a... But, yeah, I mean, that was, that was the leg, most... Wasn't that it? was a, the most, I'm like, glad Karen shut her down there. She was like, mm, was, Today no. we're designing cars. I changed a tyre once. <laughs> Like, I've looked at cars. Yeah. I've bought a car before. Mm. Uh, I've ridden a bicycle. I own electric bikes. My family ride bikes everywhere. It's like it's it, it was a bit of the kind of Tommy syndrome, yeah, but kind of in reverse. Rather than Tommy going, "Yeah, I love it." Way um, Lottie was more. I know how to do this better than you. So let me be in charge. I think she's a victim of her own demise. Yes, if that's a good way yes. to put it. I, I like her though. As I think, I don't know if oh, she'll yeah. get into the top two. But I I, think, I don't think she'll be in the top two. I think if she wasn't so. Oh, 
how how would you describe her personality? Mm. It's not self confident. I, I think she's a bit arrogance. oblivious. Yeah. To yeah. her own. If she was weaknesses. A, if she was a yeah. bit more down to earth, I think she'd be easily yeah. won the strongest because mm. her ideas aren't necessarily bad. Yes, obviously last week's wasn't executed all that well. Yes, it's but a nice I think only a couple tone. of minor tweaks because that shoot was was very you know, quite regal. I think the only thing that they made the mistake of was that. Um, the the power of leaning over a lady i think that kind of wasn't all the best no um but besides that i thought the shoot was could have been really strong um but but then as a team the three of them saved it in the pitch yeah. whereas in the, one on the other side dean was just like uh perfume smell uh, the whole episode i actually had an idea can What's i pitch that? it to you of course so it'd be a men's I'd, perfume very yeah. simple very simple it'd be a very uh if you ever smelled diesel uh, diesel, uh, diesel shape. pet, diesel fuel, yeah, <laughs> not <smell>. diesel fuel. <laughs> um, very uh, musky, uh, like a mm. leathery kind of smell. But the bottle yeah. would be uh, a tie. Oh, for, okay. for businessmen. Yep. I've never once, bro. I love aftershave. I, yeah, I look at them all the time. I find them really interesting. I, they're all, you know, usually really like uh, the bottles. Usually really, oh, what's the word? Uh, Corrugated. Bland. Just a bit square. Yeah, a bit square. And then I thought a tie that was kind of in, you know, standing up from point to the top, and then you sprayed it from the top of it. It was a dark navy. I always thought mm, that'd be quite good. Cool. There's not really a market for that. I really wanted someone to pitch that. That's what I would have gone for. A, like a tie-shaped bottle um, for, the, for the businessman. That seems quite niche. Exactly. I quite like it. I don't think so. Mm. Not in London. No, no, you're right. Not with no, the businessmen right. that are always no, like, you know. Sir, flog at Canary Wharf, you'd be yep, I, laughing. I, that, I had it the whole time. I kept getting more frustrated. It's like the tie would have banged, you know. <laughs> it would have been so good. That's um, good. It's quite it's good to have some ideas as it comes through in these tasks. Right, yeah, should we move on to... Sorry. <laughs> but yeah, so question is, who are the last two we think are going to be in oh. the final two? If I, if I ping up the uh, list Scarlet and Karina. Apprentices. I agree with Steve there. Uh, I don't even need to bring up the list because I those are my two. I concur. Uh, there we I, go. I I th- I think Lewis, based on the last task, is now at the bottom of the pecking order. He might save himself of his charisma in the interviews. True, but I but do think yeah, yeah. I think Lottie will crumble in the interviews because she yeah. won't accept cr- criticism. Yes, and then the other one, Pamela. I sadly, I she, pa- Pamela was Pamela's quite weak, but in quite a lot of areas. May, maybe but it's it, it down depends. To, it depends on how, obviously how they sell the business and mm, what strategy. Maybe it's down to the edit. With. Maybe she is highly involved and we just don't see it because yeah, she's not that much true. of an interesting person. I don't know. But typically, if you look at the girl who won last year with her swimwear brand, her and Scarlett are of a very similar personality mm. and attitude, and I think Alan Sugar likes that. Yes, there you go. That's cool. my prediction. Nice. Oh, I concur. I think it'll be Scarlett and um, what's her name? Karina. Karina. Now they're, they've been the strongest. Karina's won the most amount of tasks. Scarlett's always done well, even even if she's lost. So um, yeah, I'd I'd pick those two to be the final. But we will find out. It's on tonight. Um, BBC One, nine PM. Yep. But in your, when you're hearing this, it'll be yesterday. So get it on your local catch up service. Just don't burst in and spoil anything. Cause sometimes no. we don't watch it till the weekend. Mm. Great. Cool. Nice. Well, shall we move on to what we've been watching on our Todds? JB is top of that list. I am top of the list. Uh, I've not actually had much time to watch anything, like sadly. Um, because I've been too busy with mocks and all that sort of jazz. Um, but I have uh, been keeping up, obviously, the t- the, the DC TV universe that I watch ad- watch adoringly. For some reason, I don't know why. I've just got addicted over the years. Um, obviously, the kind of um, end of the TV show Arrow, which was the first one to kind of spawn it all off. Um, and then you've also got like Flash, Supergirl, all that kind of jazz to go along with it. Um, so at the moment, they're kind of creating this humongous crossover event um, between five different TV shows and all the episodes sequentially kind of have the same story arc across five different series, which I think is insane, really, to kind of organize that. Uh, but most of them are filmed on the same lot. So that kind of helps in that kind of way. Um, because they're, they're all filmed fairly easy location. You can kind of plan ahead um, to how the stories are going to inter- intercut. But I, I think they're doing quite a nice job of it, really, to kind of integrate all of them. We've had uh, three episodes so far. The most recent one uh, obviously aired in America last night. Um, so it will air over here today, maybe, I think. Um, so I'll try and keep up with that. But so far, so far, it's all right not going too far otherwise i've got a lot of things on my list to watch but uh it's all just on netflix and it's just a case of when i find time which cool. is all christmas why isn't it here now why can't why can't we finish today would have been nice deadlines be a brewing deadlines be a brewing 
Oh yes. So yeah. Uh, otherwise, uh, no, I don't. I don't really have much else on my list. I've I've been recommended the newer Mary Poppins. Apparently that was good, but I don't know. I haven't seen it. Have any of you seen it? I nope. No. Well, I can't comment on that. Um, I'd happily watch Le Mans sixty six again nice. all day. Uh, otherwise, no, not nothing else from me that I've watched really. Um, over to me, is it? I believe yeah, so. Um, I yeah. see. WD, okay. WD, tell but me more. I've seen three things over the past week. So I finished The Irishman, but I had to do that in two sets because it's almost four hours long. Oh! Um, but it's awesome. Um, the de-aging and aging of the characters is phenomenal. Um, probably the best I've ever seen it. It's very easy to kind of just forget what's going on in terms of that. Like, you did, nothing sticks out at you, which is really nice. Um, it's brutal. It's very hard-hitting. And a very character development based storyline, you get very attached. Um, One of the best features of this film, I think, is whenever a character pops up on screen, um, it it gives you their like their how they died. So because they're all like real characters, it's like uh, died 1950, three gunshots to the chest or something like that. (laughs) um, Even though you may never see that character again in the in the in the show, it's like these people have been involved at all different points through crime. All seem to have got comeuppance at some point, so it's quite cool. Um, the other one's called Orphan Black. Um, it stars um, a single female character who uh, is orphaned um, very early in life. Uh, we don't really know, know anything about her parents. She has sort of like a brother that she picked up from uh, orphanage. Um, and it's a story about how she keeps running into people who look very much like herself. Um, and the story's been unfolding and folding uh, I'm not going to spoil anything because there's like huge things happens in the first episode it's slowly unraveling a bit more uh, very interesting I think it's going down a sci-fi route I'm not too sure yet um, but I'll let you know uh, about, about that oh score on the Irishman's 9.5 out of 10 by the way I loved praise. it awesome you'll love the it cinematography and it's mind blowing as well so cool um, and the last one is Park, Parks and Rec Parks and Recreation. Yes, oh, nice. yes. Which I've never seen before. Really? Yeah. I've I've seen season one. That's what I'm then, watching at the moment. But then, cut for some reason, I mean, this was a few years ago. So Steve's shaking his head. Then disappointed in Friday night dinner. Oh, oh yeah, that's got to come. Yeah, don't but, worry, then, don't but then it disappeared off Netflix years ago. So yeah. I've never gone further than like season one, episode like twelve. Or it's something. the Donald Glover one, isn't it? No, that's um, this has got um, that's Chris Community. Pratt. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Community got... highly recommend. Oh yeah, that's awesome. Flipping oh, amazing. Yeah. That. Sorry, my apologies. Yeah, it's good fun at the moment. It's quite funny. Um, the person who writes the show is also star in it, so it's, that adds quite a good dynamic. I think it's, got most it's very much. Are. It's very much feels like The Office. Very. Yes. I was about to say it's very Gervais syndrome. Yes. To do stuff yeah. Like that. Uh, I've been enjoying all those so far. Mm. Yeah, that's my list. Nice, Steve. Hello. Bring the sadness. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Bring um, sadness. It's not really like that kind of sadness. It's kind of ominous. I mean, it's here anyway. Ominous French horn tone. So there's a new limited series on Netflix. We're back with the crime. I'm still watching crime stuff. Um, and we started watching this limited series called The Confession Killer. Mm. So if I said the name of uh, Henry Lee Lucas, does it ring any bells to you? Not to me. Around the Ted Bundy era of serial no. killers? Um, so I'm, basically, I'm not into my serial killers as much as you, Steve. I, I just find it really intriguing. And this one's a perfect example because I'm two episodes into it. Well, two and a half, you could argue. And basically, it's about this guy who uh, gets found out for killing what we assume to be his love. Um, and then uh, it seems very normal, uh, goes to court, you know, gets sentenced for it. And then as you get sentenced, bear in mind, this is right at the beginning, he goes, what about the other hundred people that I've killed? literally in the middle what? of the courtroom um and it then just spirals out of control with you just hear reports of you know henry lee lucas is you know claims to be responsible for killing over 200 people 300 people even at one stage somebody says over 600 people so all these people are getting in contact with him and basically it's this series kind of following his journey of going through the process of kind of arguably uh, closing these what appearing to be cold cases um and you kind of you're the, it's not a spoiler because i've not seen a lot of it i'm only two episodes in but you you start to learn about him as a character he's a weird dude really really weird dude um doesn't really seem all there um has a from what i can gather a very very low iq um but then a lot of his stories start to really not add up and i'm at a stage now where um, i don't know if people who are listening have watched the whole series so i don't know what unfolds but personally i think he's talking absolute baloney i don't believe absolute i don't believe an ounce of it i don't believe he originally killed the other the first person i don't think he's ever killed anyone 
Um, so why why do you think he'd then say just to what like give himself a bit of a name? Potentially, um, there's these arguments that uh, again this is this is at the start of the second episode, which kind of argues his motif, which I guess is not a spoiler to tell the audience, but. Um, obviously this lady did pass away who he was in love with he claims to have killed her mm. i personally don't buy it um and he's uh seeking something called uh legal suicide and that's where basically he because obviously in in uh in religion if you commit suicide that's a sin i believe um and then you can't he won't be able to join his uh his, his love in heaven so he's going about this route to get the death penalty so somebody else kills him and therefore he goes to heaven oh interesting thing i then get more confused about is lying not a sin would he not head south below the earth's crust i don't know how, how, how the scales tip but either that way mean, that's but, um, that's the kind of the moral dilemma it's talking about when i, I think mean, because of his back catalogue of murder he's probably going down but thing is though like um again uh no spoilers there's uh, a reporter is kind of the main person that kind of talks to you because he he was the reporter during this whole fiasco and he starts to do his own investigation and some of the stuff he comes up with um really start to question and again um he does come up with alibis as to why you know he you know these this evidence reported uh, to argue why he didn't kill these many people um it's really interesting to kind of see this to and fro of you know oh my god he killed this many people but hang on a minute he couldn't have because of x y and z oh he then justifies it oh we're then back one so a lot of to and fro oh 100 percent. and i'm currently i've been thrown back completely the other side and i'm currently now like this guy i'm interested just, just to see where this full goes of, full looking, of baloney looking forward to hearing i'll be going home and watching it tonight um it's very archival footage really really cool the guy's creepy he's got like three teeth and that he oh god it's weird um but yeah that's what i've been watching and find it really interesting netflix puts out some really good crime stuff kind of longed that little bit out because it's the only thing i've kind of really watched it's been quite a busy week um so yeah that's what i'm cracking on with it's a limited series never know how much netflix elongate their limited series um mm. but yeah if you're into your crime stuff it's quite an interesting one and the good thing about this one it's more psychological they don't show you any graphic imagery um it's all about him and it's a character person and as you guys know cool. i like my character studies i find yeah. them very interesting um so there you go That's very nice well, that, that wraps it up pretty much um i mean the last two things are, i i thought might be worth mentioning new wonder world 2 trailer looked all right wonder woman wonder woman not wonder world lol <laughs> um that's that'd be a different thing um and then the the um, in case you boys have seen it have you seen the new ghostbusters yes. trailer no what did you what did you reckon mr well uh, it's okay i'm, I'm, I'm bit, i don't know what world yeah i don't know like where it's going because they they rebooted it and then they did the all female cast. Yeah. And now we've got back to another But it's almost like in the future. In the future. Of so, that. so so imagine know. imagine the original Ghostbusters, but then it's like their grandkids like oh. find all their stuff and then a bit like Jumanji, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, a little bit. A little bit bizarre. You guys, we're back in Jumanji. Jumanji. <laughs> I want to yeah. go see that. Yeah, yeah great. Jumanji Jumanji two does look great fun. There's but two then other trailers that have come out. Oh yes. There's the Bond trailer. Yes, that looks, has. Looks alright. And then there's a the new Ryan Reynolds film. That looks <laughs> like first quite, guy. First new, guy. Yeah, looks yeah, like a really guy. original idea. Curious it looks, to see it where looks, it goes. Yeah, it's it's like an NPC um decides to want to play the game. However, you watch the trailer, you're like, Oh, this seems interesting. July release date. You're like, You're like oh, so far away. Yeah. Hence, um, hence the word teaser. It's like the Black Widow trailer. Yeah. It's got one now as well. Um, but cool. yeah. And then the big hype. Oh, uh, hype that train. I think will kind of come back. To, oh, no, it's no. I tell you, I was January? about to say, yeah, 1917 yep. will be the big one. But oh, yeah, I think we might have one. a pod prior to that telling everyone how excited we are. To yes, see it. hopefully we'll get Ross on for the follow up. Yeah, he's booked in for the 16th, mm, the week I after. Oh, are we sensing Something like a, that. No, be the 15th. Wednesday, the 15th. Are we sensing a department cinema trip? Hopefully. Oh, that'd be cool. That'd be great. Whoop, whoop. And then we get everyone's reviews. It'd be quite funny. Cool. We'll go around with a little mic and be like, Dan's review. I hated it. <laughs> Jay's review. It'd be good to get a bunch yes. of people around. You know, get It'd be quite second. funny. A, a nice discussion. Cool. Uh, but yeah, that pretty much summarises our uh, fairly... Oh, it's too quiet. Damn it. Oh, you fool. Let's do that again. Fairly festive episode. Um, hopefully this guy will come down uh, your, your chimney and put some nice gifts under your tree. Santa's coming in town. Santa! <laughs> Oh, oh my god. god. Ho ho ho. Nice. Giant. <laughs> That's never going to escape. That's me. never going to escape, is it? Uh yeah, but hopefully you do get everything on your Christmas list. Nice. <laughs> um and hopefully yeah, it's not a it's not a sad one. Have you played all of them that are on that cartel? Uh yes. Nice. Yes, I have. Nice. 
um that's quite enjoyed scary. that thank you very much uh, but yeah no so uh that yeah that pretty much ends up our uh Chris, christmas festive pod um hopefully you'll tune in the next physical year uh we'll have uh, all the episodes back on the first week we come back that sounds scary uh, in saying january. that the next I decade know. boys 2020 next decade oh my god i'll be even older <laughs> the pod continues next the decade. pod continues well obviously star wars that's coming out yep. over crimbo uh so i'll we'll have to give that a watch but yeah we might have quite a big well, list. We're, we're gonna have a bumper list on the way back cool. on the first Sounds uh, good. one in uh otherwise i've been james i'm will and i'm steve and you've been listening to the where's my kit bag podcast thanks for listening to the where's my kit bag podcast feel free to drop us a comment about anything you want us to cover in the section below hit us up on instagram or twitter at f6 media and phil merry christmas